This show begins with a quiz. It's about Israel and one other country, and your job is to guess which one. Ready? Here we go. In 2006, when Hamas won democratic elections, this country was the first to cut all aid to the Palestinian Authority. In 2009, during Israel's attack on Gaza, the UN Human Rights Council passed a resolution condemning the attack. This country was the only one that stood with Israel in that vote. When Hugo Chavez expelled Israel's ambassador over the Gaza attack, this country said that it would take over representing Israel in Venezuela. All right, which country are we talking about? If your guess was the United States, you would be wrong. The correct answer is Canada. In the past four or five years, Canada has emerged as Israel's most fervent supporter on the international stage. Meanwhile, here inside the country, there's a battle going on between a powerful pro-Israel lobby close to the conservative government and a growing Palestinian solidarity movement that sees Israel as an apartheid state and is calling for boycott, divestment and sanctions. On this episode of Fault Lines, we take you inside the debate over Israel and Canada, the other special relationship. Canada has long been known as a mediator. And it makes sense, sandwiched between its colonial parent, the United Kingdom, and its imperial big brother, the United States, the country has often played the diplomatic role of the middle child. But when it comes to policy towards Israel, particularly under Conservative Prime Minister Stephen Harper, the government of Canada has given up any pretense of neutrality and has very publicly picked one side. Let me tell you, friends, our government believes that those who threaten Israel also threaten Canada. We have stood with Israel even when it has not been popular to do so, and we will continue to stand with Israel just as we have said we would. What's behind this position? And what implications does it have for Canada and its role in the eternal debate about the Middle East? To try to answer those questions, we talk to people with a wide spectrum of views, from leaders in the mainstream Canadian Jewish community to leaders in the Palestine Solidarity Movement. And there is one point, one, where we found wide agreement. The Harper government is showing unconditional support to Israel. This prime minister is probably the most supportive on Jewish issues in general than any prime minister that, that I can think of. Even more, believe it or not, than the, uh, than the American government, which is hard to fathom, but it's true. I think it's a great relationship. <clears throat> I think it's about time. There's no doubt we, uh, Israel is uh, very pleased with the positions that uh, the Canadian uh, government takes. Canada's shift to an enthusiastically pro-Israel foreign policy actually began in 2005 with Liberal Prime Minister Paul Martin. But in the Harper era, there have been a series of historic moments in which Canada made its loyalties clear. In 2006, when Israel faced international outcry over the civilian cost of its war on Lebanon, Canada was in its corner. Israel has a right to defend itself. I think Israel's response under the circumstances has been measured. During Israel's attack on Gaza in December 2008, Canadian cabinet ministers suggested that the burden of responsibility lay with Hamas for firing rockets. And on the day when Israeli commandos killed nine members of the Gaza Freedom Flotilla, Israel's prime minister shared a photo op with Stephen Harper in Ottawa before rushing home to deal with the fallout. Prime Minister, uh, as I told you, Canada deeply regrets this action, the loss of life and the injuries that have occurred. People like to think of Canada as the peace broker, the, the kind ones that are honest brokers in the situation. Unfortunately, that is changing very fast. Canada has abandoned the idea that it has to be a so-called honest broker and that it can adopt a what it regards as a more principled position and openly take the side of, of uh, one competing faction or the other. So why has Canada abandoned its neutral tone when it comes to the Middle East? On one level, it's about domestic politics. The Jewish community in Canada is only 1% of the population, but it has traditionally voted for the opposition Liberal Party. Clinging to a minority in the House of Commons, the Conservatives are courting any advantage to try to swing a majority in the next election. 
but people on both sides of the debate say it's less about politics and more about world view. I would have to say that this government in particular has its own principles and therefore Israel as an ally in the battle against terrorism falls into the thinking of uh, the conservative government. There's a very right-wing government in Israel. There's a very right-wing government here. They have the same economic interests in terms of military trade. Canada does over a billion dollars of free trade with Israel. A lot of it is military. Frankly, none of it adds up. There's this 100% knee-jerk, automatic, ready-eye-ready -ready, uh, support for Israel, and worse even, I guess in my view, the notion that any criticism of the Israeli government, which at the moment happens to be one of the most reactionary, racist, violent governments in the world, any criticism of them is de facto anti-Semitism. The Harper government denies that it's trying to silence criticism of Israel but it has been aggressive in dealing with those it claims are anti-Israel. Immigration Minister Jason Kenney spearheaded a government effort to ban British MP George Galloway from entering Canada for a speaking event. According to Kenney, the fact that Galloway led an aid convoy to Gaza made him a supporter of terrorism. Here's how Kenney describes Galloway. A major finan f uh, financier of the anti-Semitic death cult called Hamas. A federal judge disagreed. In a scathing ruling, the court found no evidence that Galloway was a security threat or supporter of terrorism, and determined that the government tried to ban him because it dislikes his political views. Galloway rushed to Canada to savor the last word in the episode. It cannot be in Canada's interests to reduce itself from a country that was once admired, respected, even loved in the world to being no more than an embassy for Benjamin Netanyahu in world affairs. The Conservative government has also cut funding to organizations that it claims are anti-Israel. Millions were withdrawn from UNRWA, the UN agency that provides basic services to Palestinian refugees. Millions more were cut from a Toronto program for teaching English to new immigrants. It was run by the Canadian Arab Federation, a vocal critic of the government's Israel policy. Another target in this battle took many Canadians by surprise, a venerable aid organization called Kairos. It's a distinguished coalition of non-governmental organizations drawn from mainstream Christian faith communities across the country, about 14 groups in all has a history of uh, very for, uh, formidable work. For almost 40 years, Kairos had been receiving government grants for programs in the Global South, from support for indigenous communities in Colombia to justice for rape victims in the Congo. And it turns out that Kairos got a phone call. They weren't to be funded. They would be cut entirely. Uh, the reasons were not apparent for quite a while. It turns out that uh, Mr. Kenny, in a revelatory speech made in Jerusalem, uh, offered the reason. We have defunded organizations, most recently like Kairos, who are taking a leadership role in the boycott. In the, I take it that some of the Canadians who are here, in the uh, boycott, divestment, and uh, sanctions campaign. There is one problem with this allegation. Kairos Canada played no such role. In fact, after a long internal debate, the coalition had come out against the boycott campaign in a policy statement made public a year earlier. There may be an explanation for the government's confusion, a pro-boycott statement from another group called Kairos. But that was a Christian coalition called Kairos Palestine, no connection to Kairos Canada. So the minister got his facts wrong and $7 million worth of aid for countries, for humanitarian work in foreign countries was cut as a result of a factual error. Would you be concerned if that was the case? I, I think I, I mentioned to you before that I don't practice uh, providing comments on things where the reporter talking to me is the only source I have for that. Inevitably, some kind of judgment calls will be made. And, and they'll be based upon the, 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 the they should point be based of view on that facts, right? Well, they should be based upon, inevitably, they will be based upon the point of view that the government has, the policy point of view it has. 